Hello, everyone. I'm Marianne Padalano, author, inspirational speaker, and district president at the International New Thought Alliance. Welcome to Power Perception and You. This show is based on my second book, The Peephole Effect, Perception is Everything. Now, this show, like the book, will inspire you to recognize your divine greatness and the unlimited possibilities that await you. You can order it on Amazon.com, as well as my first book, Journal Like God. Okay, but enough about me, okay? Today is special, as a special episode, extra special because it's Friday, but also because my guest is filmmaker John Miller. So let me tell you a little bit about John first before I welcome him. Um, I'm going to tell you about him and the incredible film, As a Man Thinketh, uh, that is going to be released this fall. And I have the great honor to be a part of the project. So, so John Miller is an independent filmmaker and singer-songwriter from Mobile, Alabama. He has been involved with video production for over 15 years and released his first documentary, What is New Thought?, in 2013. That movie was screened in many New Thought centers across the country and would eventually be enjoyed by people around the world. Now, as a singer-songwriter, he has produced three full-length albums of original material and has been the opening act for artists such as Trace Atkins, Josh Turner, and the Charlie Daniels Band. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yes, now for his work in bringing attention to the new thought movement through his documentary films and his positive music, he was presented with the prestigious Torchbearer Award at the 100th International New Thought Alliance World Congress. So welcome, John. <laughs> Well, thank you. It sounds impressive when you say it like that, Marianne. It is <laughs> impressive. Are you kidding me? Yeah. How are you on a Friday afternoon? I'm doing very well, thanks. Yes, yes. And how are you? I'm doing good. It's good to be here and uh, to be here with you on your program. And uh, I'm so excited about what you're doing uh, with this program and, and being able to share this message with the world. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And I'm just so uh, pleased to have you on today. And um, there's just so much to talk about uh, that I don't even really know where to begin, but we may have to do another show after the film release, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, your, uh, your new film uh, is uh, As the Man Thinketh, and it's based on new thought. But I, I ask my guests this question a lot, and that is, uh, what brought you to new thought? What, how was new thought and the teachings brought to your attention? Yeah, you know, it's kind of interesting. I um... At the time, this was about maybe 10 years ago, maybe a little bit longer, actually. Uh, I'd sort of fallen out of church. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I grew up Methodist and Baptist and kind of had fallen out of church. And uh, but I was doing, uh, you know, a good amount of reading. And uh, I picked up a book by Tony Robbins. And uh, it was Awaken the Giant Within. And I really just took to uh, what he was teaching. And uh, from there, I picked up you know, a lot of other books, everything from Dale Carnegie to Zig Ziglar, and then eventually yes. even made my way to some of the more spiritual stuff like Wayne Dyer and Deepak Chopra and stuff. And uh, eventually, you know, you kind of start with some of the personal development, self-help stuff. But eventually I realized there's like a spiritual undercurrent to all this stuff that I was learning. And uh, exactly. I didn't know exactly what it was, but I, I could tell that there was something there. And uh, and I'm, I'm a musician at the same time. And so, um, you know, as I was writing songs during this period of time, I noticed, you know, my songs were kind of taking on a, a different sort of um, meaning. You know, they were they were becoming more and more positive, you know, message type songs and, and things like that. And uh, so I was just curious one day, I said, I wonder, you know, where are people listening to, you know, positive music or, you know, music that has a positive message to it, you know, and, uh, and somehow or another, I found out about uh, unity and religious science. Yes. And, uh, and I was like, well, well, that's, you know, I never heard of that. What is that all about? And uh, so I did a little bit more search and I found that there was a, uh, there was one in Mobile, Alabama, and wow. it was a, a guy who was a, a former, uh, you know, traveling musician, David Alt, and uh, 
And so I reached out to him and we kind of hit it off and I uh, began taking some classes there at their center. And, um, you know, from time to time I would go play music over there and uh, we'd do different things. And, and uh, in the midst of all that, I, I became very interested in, you know, the philosophy of new thought and, you know, what it all meant and where it all came from and kind of started digging into the history and that's kind of what spurred on the, the first documentary, which was what is new thought. You know, it was just some of the things that I'd learned and picked up on in my you know early time of, of being around new thought. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, and it's just, you know, you're just so passionate about it, making like these films. And um, I just think that that's really amazing. And a lot of us start off with realizing that there is a power within ourselves, you know, just yeah. like uh, the giant within or whatever. And yeah. um, we realize that there's more to it, you know, that there is, it's us, but perhaps it's it's not quite us alone. There's an yeah. essence or a presence exactly. there. Exactly. So it's, yes, yes. And that so, was, and I guess that was part of what I wasn't getting in my traditional church that I was going to um, at that time. You know, I didn't, uh, I, I felt in my heart that there was uh you know, a spiritual undercurrent to all this personal development and stuff. But, you know, uh, but I would go to church on Sundays and you'd hear a lot of <laughs> fire. Like separation. Stuff. Right. right. Like right. It's exactly. not within you. It's not in you. It's outside you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But something in you, I guess, and, and I think and uh, people that come to New Thought, we, we tend to sense that it is within, not mm. without. Yeah. And then and we just we hear about it. And then, um, and then, you know, we read about it or whatever, but I think it's just something that we just know uh, intuitively almost, sure. you know? And so yeah. I think that's just so powerful. And, you know, sometimes it takes courage uh, or just thinking outside the box or outside the norm or society to investigate this sort of thing, you know? Yeah, um, and well, so it, it is, it is ultimately up to us. And uh, yes, and it was, it was funny because, um, you know, at the time, like I said, I'd kind of fallen out of church and I wasn't going anywhere. So but before I met David, uh, I decided I was going to do a little investigate. I was going to find out about this new thought mixture and get in some, you know, crazy cult or something. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know. So I know. I said, a lot of people think we're in a cult, but we're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I said, well, okay, I don't feel comfortable walking inside one of these places yet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my, this is before iPhones now, I'm going to get out yeah. my iPod. Right. And I'm going to get a, I'm going to find these podcasts and of these different churches. I'm going to listen to what they have to say, you know? And, uh, and so I did, I pulled up a lot of uh, different podcasts of churches, you know, new thought centers and churches around the country. And, uh, you know, the first one I heard, I just, you know, I wanted to start crying because I was like, wow, yeah. this is really, you know, so much of what I already believed or already thought kind of know intuitively yeah. right yeah. yeah and and it was so cool because um the people that i listened to um there were probably a handful of them that actually later on got to interview and uh and put in my documentaries and and uh, so it was just Amazing. cool to be able to take those people that i heard early on and uh, be able yeah. to you know document you know their messages and what they were teaching yeah that's amazing awesome so, John, um, the new film, As a Man Thinketh, um, is, of course, based upon the New Thought classic, which was, is really old thought, but we call it New Thought, right? <laughs> of, of the same name by James yeah. Allen. Yes. Uh, yes. And, of course, that book um, inspired you to produce the film. Um, but what about the book captured your attention or your, your passion to want to actually produce a film about it? Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Well, whenever I first found out about New Thought, you know, I started digging into the history and, and uh, I was looking for traces of it, you know, all over the place. And uh, one of the books that I found early on was As a Man Thinketh. And, uh, it's, you know, I know you know this, but I don't know how many yeah. of the watchers know, but it's a very, very short book. Yes. Um, yeah. But yeah. it's I have so, it right here. To say okay, it's, look at you. <laughs> yes, it's, it's tiny. It's, not, it's almost like an essay. Can, it's not, yeah, can, right. Yeah, it is. It's yeah. more like yeah, an yeah. essay. You can read it in one sitting. But yeah. I just remember picking that up and reading it, and it was so poignant. It was so concise, and it just, um, it was. But it was also very poetic, and I just, um, it always stuck with me. 
you know, yes. just the simplicity of it. But but also the fact that I mean, you could actually you could literally take one line and and just kind of marinate on it for a day. I mean, you could just take, you know, line by line and just really, you know, just think about what he's saying. He, he, it's like he doesn't even waste a, a single word. In the right. <laughs> way that it's I written. know it's so uh, <laughs> just right. Even from the opening um, there's mm -hmm. like a poem at the very beginning. Yeah. And uh, if just even just that, just contemplating that uh, you could mm -hmm. do that for days. It's just amazing. But, yeah. but I agree with you that the book, although it appears to be simple, it's mm -hmm. deep. It's very, it really very is. deep. And there's so much value there. It really um, is. To consider. Well, and, uh, and so, you know, for me, as I was considering what I wanted to do next, um, you know, I, I'd already decided I didn't want to do just another straight up documentary. Um, and so I was, I was thinking about how could I mix, you know, uh, sort of a storyline type film with the documentary and kind of take, you know, this um, this, you know, type of presentation I'm already familiar with. I already know a little bit about you know, documentary filmmaking, and then use that to kind of grow into something else. And so I began to think about, well, you know, as a man thinketh, it's actually, you know, it's short enough that we could actually cover a good bit of the book in a movie with a storyline. You don't feel like you're just, you know, overlooking, you know, the whole book, you know what I'm saying? And so like, yeah. Um, so that became the new, the new challenge uh, is how, how to integrate those two together. And uh, right, kind of like a drama and the documentary, like a doc right. drama. Exactly. Like if you ever saw what the bleak do we know, it's it's kind of a, yeah. a mix of a storyline along with, you know, your your regular sort of talking heads type documentary where they're presenting facts and information to you. Yeah. So that was kind of a new venture for you to do sort of the drama yeah uh, aspect of it right yeah, i kind of yeah my thing was like i wanted to keep growing you know as a filmmaker and so yes um, and so at the same time like even though that was something i really wanted to do it was something that kind of scared me because i really didn't know much about how to do that yeah you know, I've written a script or worked with actors or actresses before and so it was kind of a, um an interesting challenge you know to take on and, and uh yeah now, I think you wrote about that in New Thought Magazine a little bit. Uh, you touched on, yeah. but like, as far as the journey yeah. um, to to the film. And I think that it was the perfect opportunity for you to actually implement, you know, the principles <laughs> of the book, right? That's it's, right. Because that's it's, right. Almost like, it's almost like, okay, so I've never done this yeah. before, you yeah. know, yeah. Um, totally new, but mm -hmm. obviously you had to have, keep a vision uh, in, in mind and, and, right. and have belief in exactly. what you were doing. Um, and, you know, we all go through um, times of, you know, fear, doubt, and worry or something like that, especially when we take on a big project. Sure. Um, and I know that's even like for my two books, it starts out with that concept. And sometimes yeah. I even have the the book cover done before the you know, the book yeah. is even written. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, but that's, and that's helpful kind of, too. I mean, it's yes, like, it's helpful because it gives you that yeah. that spiritual principle in action in a way, like calling it forth. You know, exactly. and exactly. then the universe fills like, it in. Also, remain inflexible enough to allow it to happen and not just kind of force it to happen. Right. There's no forcing. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So I think so. I think that, and you wrote a little bit about that, like how. Um, you know, the journey to uh, actually now we're here, like it's going to be released in a, probably a few weeks or a month yeah, or, yeah. or whatever. And <laughs> um, scary like that, Miriam. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Yeah, I know. Right. No, uh, yeah. but no, you're absolutely right. And, um, you know, and that that became the, you know, because I found myself like sort of dragging my feet on it a little bit because I was like, you know, here I am, you know, I've got pretty much all of my interviews in the can. And I'm sort of dragging my feet on this other part because I really don't know what I'm, you know, getting into. And, uh, and so then I, like you mentioned in the magazine article, I said, I had to ask myself, I was like, um, if I had to do this, how would I do it? Because, you know, in a sense, I, I do, I did have to do it because. Right. It's your I choice. Really chose That's it. choice. I really chose it. <laughs> exactly. yeah, yeah, it's your choice. It's right? chosen me. And, uh, yeah. And so then I started thinking about uh, people that I knew and, and who could I connect with to help me make it happen. And it, and then once I did that, it became as simple as, well, 
how do I get to Orlando <laughs> you know, where I've got a buddy that can help me, you know, pull this all together. And, and that was easy enough. You know, I've got a car. I can drive to Orlando. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's amazing how once you decide, right, you decide or and, and then and then commit. But it all come, becomes clear eventually. And it's like, uh, I, I know for me, I feel the presence of spirit or this mm. intelligence or this yes. energy that gives me um, the idea. So it's, it's almost like it is uh, us, but it's like the spirit or the essence, the presence, the love through us. You know, yeah. so it's a divine, you know, the film itself is a divine um, expression, you know, you know, so it's really yeah. amazing. Yeah. So do you, do you want to tell us like more um, uh, about the film? Like what, what the, uh, as far as uh, the message or what the audience is going to, you know, um, come away with, uh, with the film yeah. or anything else you want to talk about? Well, that? The message is really, um, it's really one of inspiration. Um, and I don't, I'm trying to think of how I want to word this. I, I think, I think this uh, teaching has kind of gotten a bad reputation over the years because um, you have a lot of authors and stuff that uh, they do tend to focus on the money aspect of, of, you know, the law of attraction and stuff. And, and, and there's a reason for that. I mean, it is what a lot of people are interested in is it is sort of an access point. Um, right. But I think really what I wanted to get across in this and, and in my other films is that there's a lot more to this movement than just acquiring things and acquiring yes. wealth. And, um, and the book really, um, not to give too much away, but it ends on a on a real high note of you know basically saying that uh, inner peace is the highest that we can endeavor for, and that all of this stuff that we're doing along the way is to sort of achieve this awareness and this um, connection with God that we are just totally at peace. And uh, I know yes, and harmony. Yes, yes. 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 And so, I mean, we can go, we can chase after our, our goals and, and that sort of thing. And that, I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But I also think that there's below the surface of that. Uh, I think God is working on each and every one of us and developing each and every one of us and, uh, and wants to use our goals and use our ambition to, uh, you know, for further spiritual development, to uh, create more love and more peace and more joy. Mm -hmm in our lives yes, and in the lives of the people yes. around us. Yes. So to use our gifts and talents, our God given um, gifts yeah. and talents in ways that are going to inspire and help others. Um, and, and I agree, it's not just um, materialist, mm -hmm. you know, stuff, you know, I think that that, that is good or great or whatever, but everyone's interested. Yeah. But, the truth, <laughs> but the truth is like you said that, at these uh, possessions are not, mm -hmm. and it's hard sometimes for people to believe, yeah. They, yeah. but they are not going to bring you harmony. Or yeah. They don't. They're, they're right. fun, maybe. They're <laughs> nice. But, yeah. But, yeah. but if you are unhappy, if you feel disconnected from source, not, nothing is going mm -hmm. to make you feel better other than that interconnection. Um, right. And I know that James right. Allen writes about that um, yeah, and he does he he makes yeah. a very clear distinction um he talks about the measure of a man and, or measure yes. of a woman and how yeah. it's not uh you know how much money they have in the bank but it's a measure of blessedness or wretchedness and that yes. you know a person that's you know homeless and on the street could be living a, a blessed life whereas you know somebody in you know the penthouse suite somewhere Right, be, you know, the most wretched, miserable person on earth. <laughs> yes, yes. And so, um, you know, there's a lot more to it. And I think James Allen uh, does a good job of describing that. I think so, too. In fact, uh, it's funny that you're mentioning that because I actually underlined some, uh, mm. a part of this, the book that, that I'm going to just share with everybody. Yeah. And this talks yeah, exactly absolutely. what you're talking about. Um, it says, uh, the circumstances which a man encounters with suffering are a result of his own mental in harm in harmony it says the circumstances which a man encounters with blessedness are the result of his own mental harmony so it's in harmony and harmony yeah. and blessedness and suffering and it said uh, blessedness is not material possessions uh, is the mm. it is the measure of right thought wretchedness mm. 
not the lack of material possessions, is the measure of wrong thought. So, uh, and it says, uh, it says a man may be cursed and rich, or he may be blessed and poor, just like you just said. Yeah. So I think that's a very important concept. And uh, one that, like you said, that the New Thought Movement doesn't necessarily, or at least um, sort of the widespread message, uh, you know, kind of gets lost in all this other stuff. And I think yeah. it's an important message. Absolutely. Yeah. It is. And, and I mean, I think, um, like I said, there's, there's nothing wrong with having money. And, uh, but, but at the same time, I, I think there's, um, there's deeper levels for us to go to and, and, uh, and to experience than just that. And, and, um, and that way I think James Allen was, was spot on. I mean, I think, um, you know, in a lot of ways he covered probably as much ground as anybody did, you know, in writing one of these books. And, yes. And to think that he was one of the first and he wasn't copying anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Were quite, they were quite amazing. I, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, and he has, you know, he has his other works. Like everything that he writes mm -hmm. is um, just so deep and profound. And uh, truly, it seems to be just a divine download. It's like, wow, how did, how did, you know, how did you know this, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it is so yeah. much about living in harmony. Um, and also, I think uh, you taking responsibility in the sense yeah. that these things aren't happening because, uh, because you're cursed or whatever, or, right. you know, these things like they, they are, you know, he, distills it down for you you know mm -hmm. this is this will produce that you know yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know and, yeah. and, and like in new th in um centers for spiritual living it's like you know the seed soil plant you know it's that sort of yeah. sort of sure. thing that goes yeah. on and he talks about you know planting seeds in your life and how yes. um how it is like planting seeds because uh you know one thing you can think about is that you know you look at your life and if you start th seeing things that you don't like well, you know, think about, you know, what seeds have you been planting? And, you know, even even if you didn't plant, let's, let's say you don't want to admit that you've planted those seeds. That's <laughs> yeah. how, right. have we, how have we nourished those seeds? Yes. Have, what yeah. kind of environment are we surrounding those seeds with that they're growing in our lives? You see what I'm saying? Yes. And, so, yes. and, and what what steps can we take to change that? And, and not not in a way that makes us guilty or makes us feel like, you know, bad about, you know, the circumstances or whatever, but in a way that is helpful and uh, in a right. way that, that, you know. And that we can make like a course correction. Right. You know? exactly. I think it takes uh, introspection. Like you've got to realize. And the funny thing is like uh, the, that, um, not funny, but it, the unique thing is that uh, a circumstance for, mm -hmm. for one person, let's say a career, you know, disaster or a personal disaster or something like that. It's not necessarily like, I mean, it is based on the thought, but for each person that's experiencing that, there's their own measure of thoughts, beliefs, sure. and feelings behind that. So everyone's is different. It doesn't mean, you know, you don't believe in a good career. It doesn't mean that, but it <laughs> yeah. means something. You're not accepting one or you're, you know, or, you know, whatever it is. Like, so I think for each person, mm -hmm. um, it takes that uh, introspection. Nobody can give them a, a like a list and say, well, because, <laughs> it, you know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. But, yeah, but it's exactly. And, and the other thing is, you know, we're always bumping into other people and they're what they're bringing to the situation as well. So, yes. you know, we, we can't just look at ourselves and say, you know, you know, it's all on me or whatever. You yes. know, we look at the other, you know, extenuating circumstances and, and other people involved, too, and, and, and how they, you know, how yeah. they are involved, I guess. Right, right. And at the same time, uh, just recognize that they are individuals themselves and subject to their own consciousness. So, you know, and but some but yeah, there's a divine uh, perfection, I think, in all of our relationships. I, um, you know, I believe that while all relationships are divine relationships, even if they, quote, fail, or if they prosper or whatever, sure. because there's something in that there's always something in there um, mm -hmm. for growth and spiritual sure. growth. And, you know, James Allen, he, he writes about that, too, that there's until like there is something in there for you to see, you know, even, you know yeah. what I mean? Just for you yeah. to see. It doesn't, you know, so it's very much about that. And I think that that um, is um, an empowering message, too, you know, because it's not like we're just going through life just 
like blind or like with our eyes closed, like our eyes closed consciously, I'm talking, you know what right, I'm saying? Like right, right. that, um, you know, we can say, uh, you know, have an open consciousness and open awareness to what's going on. And then from there, make some choices, make some, you know, co-creative choices. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the other thing is that, you know, some people, when they get into this, they start, they think that, I'm go oh, I'm going to start using this, <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but they're but, already using it. Yeah. But they're already using it. They right. just, <laughs> yeah. You know, you, you, the thing is, you can use it to, you know, consciously. <laughs> you can use exactly. it. Exactly. That's the difference. Yeah. That's the difference. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, exactly. But, because uh, we're all subject to this. It's like, uh -huh. and I think that that's um, a part of the realization, too, when you do, uh, you know, investigate this material is that it's always been uh, active in your life. But but once you're aware of it, then you could do the conscious creation, you know? Yeah. Um, yes, yes. So it's very, very powerful. And I, and I think um, inspiring because it's just proof that you're just never stuck, really. You're never just like stuck in a situation or anything like that. You can always change your thoughts, beliefs and feelings and um, make a change. I think we just lost the video. Hold on. One second, everyone. I'm going to try to get John back. Looks like he's going to be back in just a few seconds. Hang, hang on, everybody. <laughs> Sorry. With live, uh, with this live stuff, you never know what's going to happen there. It's okay. You're back. You're back. Yeah. See, I, I told everyone just to hang on. I said, I know you said all sorts of world changing things while I was. I know. I, was I know. I just said, everyone, hold on a second. I said, wait, we dropped the wait, video. We got another call coming in. Hold on. Yes. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay. So that's okay. But, but anyway, I think it's an empowering film. I think that it's going to give everybody a, a new perspective on. Mm new thought it's going to give yeah. people a new perspective um and just on a more um inherent level on a more on a yeah. just a more inherent level which is, i think is important well and i'm excited about it i really am and and uh like i say it's it's a chance to do something a little bit different you know rather than just a, a talking heads documentary and yes. uh, we're going to start doing screenings in october so yes, any, that was what I was going to ask yes. you next. We're almost out of time. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, yeah, just let if you can just get with the few minutes we have left. You know, tell us. Um, I don't want to miss the opportunity for you to tell everybody about the screenings, about the film, and where they can connect with you on social media. Yeah. So if you go to uh, thinkethmovie.com, uh, thinkethmovie.com, I got you can uh, connect with uh, with us on Facebook, Twitter. We've also got where you can sign up to get information whenever um whenever we're ready release uh all the information about screenings which will probably be next week sometime we'll be releasing those forms and people can start signing up and stuff it's it's really cool the last um last couple films that i did uh we had screenings all over the country and and uh and and i even heard from people that were screening it around the world and uh so wow. hopefully we you know we plan on this movie doing the same thing and and uh, maybe even more and uh, so we we just look to uh to impact a lot of lives with this film and, and uh, the message that James Allen had to share. Amazing. Yes. Yes. So everybody check it out. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you, John, for, for being my guest. And thank you for this film. This film is going to go on to bless the entire world. I just know it in my heart. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Marianne. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. All right, everybody. And you can check out more about me, MarianneFatalano.com, but check that out too. But anyway, so bye everybody. And, and thank you, John. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. Bye. Bye-bye.